Hey guys, make sure to like and subscribe, any support from y'all is appreciated. If you want me to post a specific manga or novel leave a comment and I'll try my best. If the video is too fast or slow for your liking then you can adjust it in the right corner of the video. My current goal is to hit 500 subscribers. What do you think of him? Jimmy asked his two bodyguards while looking at Soda who was preparing the coffee. I couldn't feel anything from him. One of the bodyguards replied to Jimmy while the other one nodded at his words. Right, he's currently vulnerable. I've got to say that it's the effect from drinking the monster potion. Jimmy nodded and explained to them. He knew the power of his two bodyguards could rival those C-rank adventurers. Still, I couldn't believe that the boy I met three months ago would become this strong, Jimmy said as he looked at Soto with a serious expression. The simple boy he met in that small village was now one of the precious students of the Ladro Institute. His guess wasn't wrong when he made a decision to block all the information about Soda and the rest of his companion regarding that incident in the desolate woods. When he met Soda at that time, Soda was weaker than average drank adventurers but right now, he could go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to a C-rank adventurers, and when using a monster potion, Soda could even defeat Gregory of the Vedredo family. But, did he really defeat Gregory Vedredo with just a monster potion? One of the bodyguards asked while looking at Soda with a doubtful expression. That's what the intel says, Jimmy answered his bodyguard's question. You will understand that he is different from others when you fight him. The pressure he is emitting feels like he fought countless battles. Countless battles? Of course, Soda fought inside the game for 10 years. He fought countless powerful creatures and defeated them. Soda suffered several losses and he died a lot of times. But he used this to get stronger and stronger until he became the top one ranking in the game. The two bodyguards didn't say anything as they just started at Soda. Here's the coffee. Soda said as he placed a cup of coffee in front of Jimmy. He then sat down on the sofa and looked at Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy said as he took a sip. How is it? Soda asked as he leaned his back on the sofa. It's good. Jimmy smiled and said. Yeah, so can you tell your reason for coming here? Soda nodded and asked with a serious expression. Jimmy looked at Soda for a few seconds before he answered. I'm thinking if you have any monster potion left. Monster potion? Soda raised his eyebrows. He understood now why Jimmy came here. Jimmy was a merchant and a monster potion would earn him a lot of money. Yeah, I wanted to buy it if you have some. Jimmy nodded at him. I'm sorry Jimmy, I don't have any monster potion left. Also, if I have some of it I wouldn't sell it to you. I'm sure you already guessed the reason why. Soda said before he took a sip of coffee. Jimmy tapped his finger on the table and he opened his mouth. Yeah, you're planning to use it as your ace in case you fought someone above your level. Just like what happened in the Greepine City. Soda fought Gregory who was above his level so he used the monster potions. Actually, I'm planning to go to your place after I've recovered from the side effect of the potion. I'm thinking if you could provide me some monster potion with your connection. Soda paused for a moment before he added, with your connection, it's not a problem to you, right? I'm sure you will find some monster potion in the underground market. So why bother asking me? I see. Jimmy nodded his head. He smiled and said, about your question. I'm thinking that if you have some monster potion we could turn it into money. If you want some monster potion, I could provide you some but don't get your hopes high. The monster potion is a rare potion, after all. Up until now, we couldn't find the recipe to produce it. Okay, I'm willing to pay the price for it as long as you can provide it to me, Soda said in a calm tone. Good. That's not a problem to me but I have one condition. Jimmy said as he raised one of his fingers. What is it? Soda asked and felt that it was natural. If Jimmy didn't ask anything, he would become suspicious about Jimmy's motive in coming here. You know. You've become famous these days. A lot of people heard your feet in defeating Gregory. Jimmy said to him. So. Soda raised his eyebrows while looking at Jimmy. He somehow guessed what Jimmy was trying to say. I wanted to use your name. You will become the adventurers of the Lanny Corporation in papers only. Every time you will go on an expedition, you will bring the name of the Lanny Corporation. Jimmy explained to him what he wanted. I see. So it's your true goal for coming here. The monster potion is just a diversion. Soda understood what Jimmy really wanted in the first place. Ha ha, you're really perceptive. Jimmy laughed lightly. But your condition? I would lose a lot from this. I'm sure that you know it. Soda pointed out one thing that he couldn't understand. That's why if I somehow find a monster potion I give it to you for free. Also, if our group found dungeons or ruins, we wouldn't hire any adventurers to explore it. We would instead hire you to explore it. Jimmy explained the benefits that Soda will receive. Hmm. Soda rubbed his chin and started to think if agreeing to Jimmy's condition was truly beneficial to him. You can answer me later, Jimmy said to him. No, I agree to your condition. Soda shook his head and said. Actually, he liked the way Jimmy treated him. 
So if he didn't agree to Jimmy's condition there's a possibility that their relationship would become stagnant. He would lose his value to Jimmy and Jimmy would lose his value to him. That's how it is. Are you sure? You can think about it for a day. Jimmy said while opening his palms. Yeah, I'm sure about it. Soda nodded at him with a serious expression. He just needed to carry the name of Lanny Corporation in his expedition and that's not a problem for him. He was sure that Jimmy would bring him a lot of benefits in the future. Good. I'm glad that you agree to it. Jimmy smiled and he reached out his hand. I'm glad too. Soda smiled and he shook hands with Jimmy. The two of them finally reached an agreement where it would benefit the two of them. Jimmy smiled and looked at Soda before he took a sip of his coffee. Still, I'm surprised that you could already walk after drinking the monster potion. The people who drunk the monster potion suffered extreme pain in their bodies. The wounds that they received wouldn't completely heal unless the healer casted a tier 3 healing speak to treat it. The mana in their energy pool would decrease permanently and they would train again if they wanted to reach their previous level. Lastly, they wouldn't be able to use mana for one week after drinking the monster potion. Well, I've bathed myself in a pool of middle grade healing potion while drinking healing potion, Soda said as he shrugged his shoulder. That's expensive. I'm sure that Ladro Institute would permit it if you skip class for one week. You're injured, after all, Jimmy said when he heard Soda's words. Yeah, I could do that, but I wanted to help everyone in the cultural festival. This is my first time attending such festival. Soda explained to him. Cultural festival? Oh, that's right I forgot about it. Jimmy recalled one of the festivals of the Ladro Institute. If I have time I will come and visit your class at that time. I look forward to it, Soda said with a smile on his face. Well then, I'm going now, Jimmy said before he stood up. Okay, I'll walk you to the door. Soda also stood up. He walked ahead and Jimmy followed him from behind. The two bodyguards didn't say anything as they just followed Jimmy. After a few seconds of walking, they arrived in front of the door and Soda opened it. Jimmy fixed his clothes and he looked at Soda. He said, I'm going now. Yeah, don't forget the monster potion. Soda nodded and said, don't worry, I won't forget it. Jimmy smiled before he stepped outside and his two bodyguards followed him. Soda looked at Jimmy's figure and he walked toward his mailbox. He opened it and found a newspaper inside it. Who ordered it? Maybe class rep. Soda muttered as he picked the newspaper and saw the news on the back of the newspaper. He saw his face and name on the news. It was the news about him defeating Gregory Vedrato in the Gripen City. My face. Soda couldn't help but sigh when he saw his face in the newspaper. He then looked on the next page and saw a news that caught his attention. The Mechanic Country. He muttered while reading the news. The news was about the Mechanic Country destroying a few small countries that used the communicator without Mechanic Country's permission. Finally, the Mechanic Country was going to show its fangs to the whole world. The overwhelming technology that will shake the entire continent will bear its fangs to the large countries in the Giza continent. Those audacious countries that underestimate the mechanic country will suffer first from the first ripple of change. Those countries have the guts to use mechanic country's technology without permission, so the mechanic country will destroy their countries without mercy. Hee hee, the world is going to change soon and I needed to prepare myself. Soda laughed as he knew how dangerous the version 2 of the game. In this version, he died countless of times because it was really chaotic in version as it was the start of the demon invasion. So he needed to prepare himself so that he wouldn't die. He wouldn't let repeat what happened to himself in the game as he couldn't afford to die in his current condition. This news was foreshadowing the rise of the mechanic country, a powerful country that will soon reach the level of the three great countries. The mechanic country will soon become a powerhouse in the Giza continent and it will contribute a lot in the war against the demon. But first, before the rise of the mechanic country event, the demon invasion will come first before everything. This was also the start of the chaotic era and the version 2 of the game. Before the version 2 started, the demon will start to appear in the southern part of the continent. The listen wastes will experience it first before any country in this world. And when the version 2 started, the demon will surge the countries in the southern part of the continent and it will spread up until the Hebrew kingdom. Soda frowned since he knew that he only had 4 months left before the start of version 2. 4 months is enough for me to rank up my class but evolution. Soda muttered as he closed the newspaper. He smiled and went inside his house. Well. Let's see if there's some unexpected factor that will happen in these four months. All the points he earned in the Gripeen City could be used to level up one of his spells, but to reach level 10 and promote to rank 3 mage? It still wasn't enough. If he triggered another quest like that once again, Soda wouldn't hesitate to use his lifespan. Although, it was a pity if his lifespan decrease. It was still worth it if he survived the version 2. What would he do to his lifespan if he was weak and he could die at any moment in the version? It's better to increase his power right now than to save his lifespan as he knew that once he reached his third evolution or battle mage class, his chances of surviving the demon invasion event will increase. 
He also knew that his lifespan would greatly increase once he evolved because a monster with a monster orb was completely different than those lower level monsters. Their overall stats were higher than ordinary and their lifespan was many times higher than normal monsters. These monsters brought fear and anxiety to the whole city of humans and demis. Their existence alone was capable of that. Soda closed the door and he went back to sleep so that he could go to class tomorrow. Soda woke up early in the morning when he felt a wet feeling on his face. Then, a soft wet thing passed on top of his face. Ah, what's that? Soda opened his eyes and quickly pushed himself into a seated position. He looked around and found that it was only Yuko. Yuko looked at him and she opened her mouth widely. Then, she gently bit his clothes and pulled him. You're hungry. Soda muttered as he stood up and followed Yuko. He recalled that Yuko was sleeping when he, Brian, and the rest ate the food that Lin cooked. He followed Yuko inside her house. There, she pointed her mouth towards the closed storage room. It seems that he was right when he guessed that Yuko was hungry. Okay, I'll open it. Soda sighed and he walked towards the door. But he found that the key that was hanging on top of the door was gone. Where is it? He looked around and found the key beside his feet. This? Soda squatted down and picked up the key. He turned his head and glanced at Yuko. Did you try to open the door with this key? NN. Yuko whimpered in a very small voice. It seems that she understood Soda's words. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'm just surprised that you managed to learn it. Soda smiled gently at her. He then shrugged his shoulder and said, Well, with your limbs, it looks like you can't put it inside the keyhole. Mew. Yuko tilted her head while looking at him. Soda laughed and he turned around. He then opened the door. Stay here for a while. Let me prepare it for you. After he finished preparing Yuko's meal, Soda went inside his room and wore his uniform. He then hung the, Vajra sword Saya, on his waist like he always does. Okay, I'm ready to go. He guessed that it will take more than a week before the monster potion that Jimmy promised to him will arrive. After all, the monster potion was a very rare potion that can only be found in unexplored ruins and dungeons. It's not surprising that Jimmy will have a hard time finding it even with the help of his connections. Soda shook his head and put those things in the back of his mind. It's not his problem how Jimmy acquired the monster potion for him. The only thing he cared about was that Jimmy kept his promise to him. You really integrated yourself in the city of humans and demis without getting yourself found out that you're a monster. Saya chuckled while Soda was looking at his reflection in the mirror. It's not that hard as long as you know their culture but, Soda paused for a moment before he added, once I've formed my monster orb, the difficulty in hiding my identity as a monster will increase. I know. I'm sure you realize it that those people from the Ladro Institute will be able to sense the best ferum. Saya said in his head before she laughed like she always does. Ufufu, I'm waiting for it. Even if Soda evolved to his next evolution he wouldn't be able to hide his best ferum from those powerful teachers in the Ladro's Institute. At the very least, he needed to reach their level before he could hide it from them. Well, it doesn't matter to me. I will leave this place and head to the God's Continent after I've evolved. Soda muttered while looking at his face in the mirror. Ufufu, that's a good decision as there are monsters there that are treated as gods by the people living there. Just like the four sacred beasts, the azure dragon, the vermilion bird, the white tiger, and the black tortoise. Those four are like gods in that continent. Saya praised him for his decision to go there in the gods continent. Soda already had a plan to go there, after he settled all the things here in the Giza continent. Because he had to free the nine-headed hydra, which was his pet back in the game. It will be a huge help to him as the nine-headed hydra was a monster that undergo the fifth evolution. In other words, its level was above level 80. Ufufu, listening to you, it feels like you're sure that you will evolve into a higher species of a goblin. Saya laughed in his head. You are truly a confident goblin. Goblin? Right now, Soda didn't understand what he is or why did he have a system in the real world. Soda shook his head and went downstairs. He bid farewell to Yuko before he went to the Ladro Institute. Soda arrived inside the Ladro Institute and found that every class was busy preparing for the upcoming cultural festival. After walking for a few minutes, Soda arrived in the cafeteria. He bought a cup of coffee and found that a lot of students were glancing at him from time to time. That's Soda, really? The one who fought Lord Gregory and defeated him. Damn. How could a student be that powerful? If I'm not wrong there are only 10 students in the institute that could fight those at the level of Lord Gregory? Yeah, you're right about that. They are the top 10 students in the power ranking of the Ladro Institute. So you're telling me that Soda, a first year student is at that level? No, haven't you heard the news at all? Soda used the monster potion to fight Lord Gregory. The students started to murmur to each other while glancing at Soda. They didn't dare to look at his eyes as they were afraid that they will tick him off. I truly become a famous person just from that incident, Soda muttered as he smiled to himself. He ignored those students and left the cafeteria. He arrived inside his classroom and his classmates greeted him. Good morning, 
Soda, we heard from Brian that you're fine now. Soda smiled at them and greeted them back. The Mage Class 1B was preparing for the upcoming cultural festival. He sat on his seat after he placed down his bag. He turned his head to his side and looked at Alice. He opened his mouth and said, what you did there was out of my expectation. Alice looked at him and smiled beautifully before she replied, me too. Soda was stunned when he saw her face. What the before he could finish what he was going to say, Saya interrupted him. Stop, I know what you are thinking. I bet you are thinking about visiting the red light district before. Ufufu, what a naughty goblin you are. No, I think that all goblins are naughty. It's the first time Soda saw Alice smile like that. Soda took a deep breath to calm his nerves. He had to admit that Alice's beauty was out of this world, especially when she smiled. Her beauty could even rival Athena. Soda thought as he recalled the goddess that he swore to serve back in the game. Back in the game, he joined Athena's faction when he came to the god's continent. Joining a faction of a god or goddess has its own benefits. Those chosen ones were called by different names. Hero, Apostle, etc. Each god has different names for their chosen people. In Athena's case, she called her chosen people Hero. So he was called Athena's hero and throughout the years he became Athena's most loved hero because of his deeds. The chosen people would be able to use the power of their god and goddess that they serve. It became popular among the player of the battle world online as countless players join the faction of different gods and goddesses. Almost all the player have their own gods, be it from the gods continent or the Giza continent. Becoming one of the chosen people of the gods could boost the stats greatly. Receiving the grace of the gods or blessings of the gods. It was the same as his current blessing, the blessing of the great. This was one of the most basic blessings that players could acquire. The only problem was that the stats it gave weren't that much. Athena? As in that child that became the goddess of wisdom and war in Olympus? Saya's voice sounded in his mind. Child? It seems that you know her. Soda wasn't surprised that Saya knew Athena. He already knew that Saya was still alive at that time when the war broke out 20,000 years ago. Nope, I only know those gods and goddesses from that continent. I'm familiar with them but from your words, it seems that you know her appearance. Have you seen her before? A goblin like you? No, I've only saw her statue before. Soda replied to her, Ufufu, just from that statue. How suspicious. Saya laughed. What's wrong, Soda? Soda snapped out when he heard a question directed at him. He looked up and saw that it was Alice. Nothing. Soda shook his head and said, I hope you understand it Yuko. He said in his mind, it seems that he's going to be late this time as he was planning to visit the red light district after class. Soda looked at Alice and asked, how's the class doing about the cultural festival? That? Well, the class rep is giving it her all, Alice said as she looked at the front of the class. Hmm. Soda also looked at her and saw that Lumalia was writing down important things that they needed to do to complete their preparation. Lumalia was placing a task on some of their classmates. She was giving orders while writing down at the same time. I'll go. Maybe they needed more manpower. Soda stood up and said while patting his clothes. Okay. Alice nodded at him and she rested her head on her hand while looking at Soda's figure. I'll try to do better from now on. I'll try to live up from Sebas's expectation. Alice said inwardly as she slowly closed her eyes. Class rep, I only managed to get this much. Joshua said as he showed the black's curtains in his arms. Lumalia looked at the curtains in his arms and counted it. One, two, three, four. She then wrote it down and tapped her pen on the table while thinking about what she should do. It would have been nice to have five or six black curtains. She muttered in a low voice. She then looked at Joshua and said, you can place it there. We still have one week so try to find another curtain. She recalled something and she added, we still have enough funds. Ask Nayo about it? I understand but. Joshua nodded and he looked around trying to find Nayo. Where's Nayo? She's in the second year building. Lumalia answered his question. Soda just looked at her managing things. He only opened his mouth when he saw everyone left to do their task. Class rep, is there anything I can do? Lumalia looked over and saw that it was Soda who called her. She then went back to look at the notebook on top of the table. She opened her mouth and asked, how are you? I'm fine. You already saw it yesterday, right? So why bother asking? Soda smiled and said, uck. I'm just trying to make sure of it. Lumalia said as she lowered her head. She didn't even try to look at his face. Well, do you need some help? Soda asked her while trying to look at her notebook. Although he knew what their class was going to do, he still didn't know the full details of it. Their class was setting up a theater play. To do this, they needed a lot of materials to set up the stage. They also need to sew the clothes of the actors and actresses. The story they were going to play was about a certain man who saved a princess from the hands of an evil dragon. What an overused story. They should have used the story of a certain man that transmigrated into another world and became a monster. Soda thought inwardly. 
What he didn't know was that this story was also overused on Earth. Well, it didn't seem bad at all to do things like this sometimes. We need some plywood, Lumalia said and she explained the size that they needed. Okay, you can leave it to me, Soda said and he left the classroom. Lumalia turned her head and looked at his back before she sighed deeply. So where should I find a plywood? Soda muttered while looking around him. He pondered if he should ask the higher year about it or not. Okay, I'll ask them. Soda made a decision. He continued to walk until he saw a female student blocked his way. Looking at this girl, Soda knitted his eyebrows and said, What are you doing? The girl in front of him has green hair that was tied in twin tails. She had green eyes and snow white skin. Her height was the same as his, no, she was taller than him by a few millimeters. She had two dark cherry color antennas sticking out on her head. Just looking at this, Soda knew that she wasn't a human. She's a demi and it looks like she was an animal type. Maybe, an insect demi. Um. Can I borrow a bit of your time? The girl asked while she kept fiddling her fingers. Soda raised his eyebrows and tried to guess what she was thinking. He observed her movements and didn't found anything wrong. Before I agree with you, can you tell the reason? He asked her while staring at her eyes. I'll talk while walking. The girl said as she lowered her head. Okay, lead the way. Soda nodded his head and looked at her with a serious expression. The girl bowed her head before she started to walk and Soda followed her from the side. Lord Soda, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself first. The girl said in a polite tone. Soda nodded at her as he ignored the word Lord before his name. He decided to let her finish first before he says something. I'm Jean Livenist, the vice president of the Soda's Union fan club. The girl introduced herself as Jean. Her words caused Soda to stop on his track. He turned his head and stared at Jean's face with a dumbfounded look on his face. W what did you say? Soda asked her while stuttering. He feels that he misheard something. I'm Jean Livenist, the vice president of the Soda's Union fan club. It's nice to meet you, Lord Soda. Jean lowered her head and said in a polite tone. Damn. I didn't hear it wrong. I really had a fan club. Soda said inwardly before he went deep into his thoughts. Hmm? I'll need to visit them to see if they are valuable or not. I know there are some fan clubs that brought harm to their idol and I don't want that to happen. Soda looked at Jean and asked, What class and year are you? I'm from the brawler class 3C. Jean answered him in a polite tone. 3C? You're my senior? Then, you don't need to be that polite when talking to me. Soda said to her. Brawler? From her looks, she didn't seem to be the type who preferred to fight with bare knuckles. Looking at him, it seems that Jean guessed what Soda was thinking. I'm a demi, a bullet and to be precise, Lord Soda, Jean opened her mouth and said. Paraponera? One of the strongest demis who are famous for their unrivaled strength among the other demis. Soda thought. Paraponera? Soda was having a hard time imagining that this girl in front of him was proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Most of the Paraponera were using their powerful strength in fighting that's why a lot of them choose to become a brawler or any other class that was proficient in fighting barehanded. A one-year-old Paraponera could already lift ten times of its own weight. Their strength would grow stronger with their age. Even a non-combatant of their race was powerful. Soda glanced at Jean and asked, Then, where are we going right now? Jean smiled and said, We're going to our headquarters. The room of the Soda's Fan Union Club. Okay, I'm also curious about this fan club. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. Soda nodded and said, Thank you, Lord Soda. I won't disappoint you. Jean thanked him while bowing her head. No need for that. You're my senior so you can call me Soda. Soda said and he waved his hand. T then, I'll call you as Soda, Jean said with a slight hesitation. I'll also call you Jean, Soda said to her. He then noticed that Jean stopped walking. He looked at her and asked, What's wrong? And nothing. Jean's face was turning red. She shook her head and hurriedly walked forward. You. You did it on purpose, right? You tease her for your amus.e.m.e.nt. You're evil. Soda smiled as he ignored the voice in his head. He then stepped forward and followed Jean. The two arrived in front of a classroom. There's nothing worth mentioning about the appearance of the classroom. It looks normal like any other classroom in this institute. We're here, Jean said to him. Soda simply nodded his head. He sensed several presences inside the classroom and guessed that they were the members of the fan club. Nothing is wrong. He said to himself in his head. Jean stepped forward and she slowly opened the door. She then stepped inside followed by Soda. Soda looked around the classroom and found that all the members of his fan club were girls. They noticed someone opened the door so they turned their head to look at it. But they were stunned when they saw the person beside Jean, the vice president of Soda's fan union club. Soda looked at them and they looked at him with wide eyes. Their mouths were hanging and they forgot what they were doing. Yo! Soda smirked and he greeted them with a simple yo word. After a few moments, they snapped out of their daze. Ah! S Sir Soda is here. Is this for real? Am I not seeing things? 
W. What should I do? V. Vice President. Is that really S. Sir Soda? Yes, I brought Soda here to show him our fan club. Gene nodded and said with a proud expression. Vice President, you did a good job. You really deserve to be the Vice President. But. They then grabbed Gene's collar and pulled her. Hey. Hey, what are you doing to me? I'm your Vice President, Gene said as she began to panic. One of the girls looked at Soda and said, You can sit anywhere you want S. Sir Soda but. Let us borrow Vice President for a talk. Soda nodded his head as they watched them with an amused expression. Vice President, we already talk about this. Yeah. Why are you call Sir Soda by his name? And with a casual tone? Why did you get ahead of us? We decided that we're all in this. So why? I'm sorry Sue A. Jean was about to say his name when she felt an ominous aura behind her. I'm sorry Sir Soda for showing you such shameful sight. No, it's okay. I did enjoy it a lot. Soda said to her. He looked around and said, what did I say before? You can call me Soda. No need to be polite. But. Jean hesitated as she glanced at her comrades who were emitting an ominous aura. You are really an evil goblin. You're actually enjoying this. Soda ignored the voice in his head and said, I'm going to get angry if you kept refusing it. Thank you, then I'll call you Soda. Jean bowed her head and she looked at her comrades with a mocking expression as if she was saying see that. I already got his permission to call his name. The members of the fan club gritted their teeth in frustration while looking at their vice president. Ha ha, Soda laughed while looking at them. It caused everyone to look at him. All of them look at him with a confused expression on their face. They were wondering why he's laughing. I'm not mocking you. I just found that all of you are close to each other. Soda explained to them. He then asked, so who's the president of this fan club? The girls, including Jean, looked at each other before they answered him. Sir Soda, we don't have a president in our club. The vice president is the one who's doing everything for this fan club. Without her we wouldn't be able to create this club at all. They answered him in chorus as if they practiced this speech. Hmm? Soda raised his eyebrows when he heard their words. He opened his mouth and asked, What do you mean by that? Sir Soda, the position of the president is vacant. They answered him. Vacant? How is that possible? Soda at them with a questioning gaze. Sir, it became possible with vice president here. They replied to him. Then, why did she not become the president of this club? Soda asked him the most important question for him. He was also curious about why did they leave the position vacant when there was a suitable person for this position. But their answer left him dumbfounded. We all think that only your fiancé have the right to become the president of the fan club. They said to him in chorus. Eh? Soda subconsciously took a step back. He took a deep breath to calm himself and asked, Fiancé? I don't have something like that. More like, I don't have the luxury to enjoy such things. Yes, they said simultaneously while cheering silently when they heard him that he doesn't have any relationship. Soda smiled and talked to them for a while. He checked their logs and found that the club currently has 12 members including Jean. They said that this club was open to the student, like them, that admired him. Ever since he showed here, they started to admire him. They collected any news and information about him. The latest news about Soda drove them mad to the point that they created this club. The news about him fighting Gregory gave them a shock. A student managed to fight and defeat the head of a noble family. This piece of news greatly increased their admiration for him. When everyone knew that Soda was looking for a plywood, they immediately went out and provide him what he needed. Thanks for helping me, Soda as he looked at the plywood that he was carrying. With the help of everyone, he easily managed to get a plywood. No, sir, it's our pleasure to help you. Feel free to ask us when you need something. The girl said to him in a polite tone. Thanks, I'll visit you if I have time, Soda said as he waved his hand at them. He then turned around and left. They were pretty good, huh? They managed to get plywood within five minutes. Soda thought with a smile on his face. He arrived in the class and gave the plywood to Lumalia. Lumalia tasked some of the people to cut down the plywood. The mage class 1B was starting to build the stage they will use in the play. They had one week to finish all of this. Boys, do your part. Who do I ask for a clothing material? We're making a good progress, huh? Can I get some clips? Sure. Perfect. We're finished with this one. Every class was busy preparing for the cultural festival. Each one has different things, some will have a theater play while the others were going to sell their food specialty. The cultural festival of the Ladro Institute was one of the famous events in the Ladro city. This day the institute will open its gate to every citizen of the city. Since the day the cultural festival was announced, fighting was forbidden on school grounds. No more challenging other students. This was the only festival that they will experience the life of normal students devoid of any fighting or battles. After this festival, everything will go back to before. Fighting, training, special test, and outdoor training. All of it will come once this festival was over. That's why the institute didn't remove this from their program. 
They wanted their students to relax and stop thinking about battles, even if it was only a few weeks. Days had passed quickly. In just a blink of an eye, six days had passed and tomorrow was the opening of the cultural festival. One, two, three, Lumali accounted the curtain on the corner. It would have been nice to have five. Well, it's the last day so getting materials is an all-out war. Soda looked at her and said. He was lucky that he had the assistance of his fan club or else it would take him a lot of time to get those materials. We're here. A loud voice sounded. Soda and Lumalia turned their heads and saw Nayo and the rest. Nayo was one of the actresses in their play. Her role was the main female lead in the story. She was with Brian, Lynn, and George. All of them were actors and actresses of the play. Let's wait for the others, Lumalia said. Soda woke up early in the morning. He got home late at night because he visited the red light district yesterday. Soda yawned as he stretched his arms before he stood up and went to the bathroom. He brushed his teeth and washed his face. You are an evil goblin. A very evil one. He heard Saya's voice in his head and he ignored it. He doesn't want to bother himself at this time. Well, he knew why she was complaining at him. He brought the sword in the red light district and let her here do the deeds with the woman there. She watched him having sex with the woman there. Soda shook his head and he exited the bathroom. He wore his uniform and checked his appearance. Today was the start of the cultural festival and it will last for three days. After the festival, they will go back to training to improve their fighting abilities. Also, the start of the outdoor training. He didn't know the full details of this outdoor training as Bargain only announced it to them. Bargain didn't give them enough details to know what will happen in this training. After this festival, he would fight ranking battles to earn some points and exchanged it for skills. He knew his strength and was sure that he could dominate the ranking and become the top one ranker. He fought the top one and above ranker in the special test so he was sure about that. There's only something that he was wary about. And it's the people who choose to hide their strength like Randolph who fought Gregory before. Soda wasn't even sure if he could defeat Randolph in a one-on-one -on -one battle. He heard from Lumalia and the others how Randolph fought Gregory. And he had one thing to say about it. Randolph's power level was high to the point that it exceeds first-year students. Using a tier 3 spell? Damn. Just by this feat, he could say that Randolph was really a powerful person. He tried to recall if Randolph resembled some of the powerful people in the game, but he didn't remember anyone that has similarities to him. Another secret character that has an unknown background. Soto was itching to know this but he was sure that no one would give important information about oneself easily. He too was like that. He wouldn't tell anyone that he was a monster unless time calls for it. Soto hung the, Vajra sword Saya, on his waist before he went downstairs. He gave Yuko her breakfast before he left and went to the Ladro Institute. On his way to the Institute, Soda saw a lot of people going inside the Institute too. Even some adventurers visited the famous Institute for fun. They were going to visit one of the most famous institutions in Hebre Kingdom. Just looking at their face, Soda could see that they were enthusiastic. Every corner inside the Institute, he could see a group of guards patrolling around. Even some teachers were patrolling around. They will be able to handle it if some trouble occurred here as all of them were powerful. Each guard have the power of C-rank adventurers while the teachers have the power that could rival those monsters that have a monster orb. Not only that, because of the existence of the principal and other high-level teachers no one would dare to cause a commotion here. The institute will naturally tighten their security on this kind of occasion. Soto went to the cafeteria first to buy a coffee before he went to his class. Holding a cup of coffee, Soda entered his class and saw that everyone was ready. The preparation was already complete. Most of the tables and chairs had been moved to the back of the classroom and stacked up to make space. The remaining table had been put together with white tablecloths on top to make it seem like lunch tables. Posters about their theater play were plastered on the walls, and accessories about it were placed around. They also placed a booth outside so that if they wanted to buy a souvenir, they could buy it in the booth. The blackboard and the area in the front of the classroom were cut off. They were going to use this place as a temporary kitchen where they would prepare the food. While this wasn't perfect by any means, Soda didn't find any significant problem. Brother Soda. He looked over and found that cl.u.s.ter was here. Oh right? He forgot that he had to tour cl.u.s.ter around the institute. I'll tour you around so wait for a while, Soda said as he patted cl.u.s.ter's head. Yes, yes, brother Brian will also come with us, cl.u.s.ter said with a happy expression. Brian? Soda looked at her and he rubbed his chin. If I'm not wrong Brian is one of the actors so I think it is impossible. Nope, nothing is impossible with me. A loud voice interrupted him. It was Brian. Soda looked at Brian with a questioning gaze. You see, Soda, I can do anything I want as we will only perform twice this day. So I have a lot of spare time to do anything I wanted. Ha ha ha. Brian laughed loudly as both of his hands were resting on his waist. I see. 
So how many hours do you have before you the start of your play? Soda nodded and asked him, two hours from now, the class rep said it to me, but I have to go back early because we have a rehearsal. Brian said to him, okay, then let's go now, Soda said and he went to Lumalia saying that he will tour cl.u.s.tear with Brian. Um. Soda heard a small voice coming from his back. He turned his head and saw a girl with long purple hair. It was Lynn. See can I join your group? Lynn asked him as she kept fiddling her fingers. Ho ho it seems that someone wanted to join the strongest group. Do you have what it takes to join us? Brian looked at Lynn and said. Hey. Um. Lynn didn't know how to answer Brian's question. What the hell is this guy saying? Soda thought as he shook his head and looked at Lynn. He wasn't the only one who was embarrassed by Brian's action. Everyone from the mage class 1b2. It's not a secret from everyone that Lynn has feelings for Soda. They didn't need to hear it from her mouth as they could clearly see it with their own eyes. Lynn's action and movement indicated that she has some sort of romantic feelings for Soda. But this guy, Brian was an idiot one. He didn't even realize why Lynn wanted to accompany their group. Everyone could only sigh and thought that it was Brian so they could expect it from him. Soda opened his mouth and said to Lynn, you can ignore that idiot, but I already promised cl.u.s.tear that I'm going to accompany her today so if it's okay for her, you can come too. He then looked at cl.u.s.tear and patted her head. cl.u.s.tear looked up at Soda and nodded her head. Soda smiled and said, it seems that cl.u.s.tear is fine with you joining us. Really? Lynn beamed a bright smile as she looked at Soda's face. Yeah. Soda nodded his head at her. Lynn sighed in relief and she flashed a beautiful smile at him. Okay, you've passed, you can join us, Brian said from the side. Soda, Lynn, cl.u.s.tear, and Brian excited the classroom and they began to walk around. They visited every class to see if they did some interesting. They walked around for an hour before they stopped for a break. cl.u.s.tear was sweating and panting so Soda decided to stop first. You're weak, too weak, cl.u.s.tear. But don't worry about it because brother Brian is here. I'll train you until you become a strong girl. Brian said in a loud voice while looking at cl.u.s.tear. Stop it, cl.u.s.tear is still too young. Soda said to Brian then he looked at cl.u.s.tear. Ignore this idiot. I'll bring you some water. cl.u.s.tear nodded his head at him. She sat on a chair and tried to catch her breath. Soda then looked at Lynn and asked her, how about you? W water is fine. Lynn replied to him as she was surprised that Soda asked her. Apple juice for me, Brian said even without Soda asking him. Soda ignored him and he went towards the nearest store. He fall in line and waited until it was his turn. He looked at the store and found that it was built by Mage Class 1A. He recalled those students that he met in the special test. After a few minutes, it was Soda's turn. Good morning, sir. What's your or the girl in front greeted him with a smile but it quickly turned into a shock when she saw that her customer was Soda. She was Eileen Carnane the top five ranker of first year students. Hello, I want four bottles of water. Soda waved his hand and said to her with a smile. Hurry up mom, they only have five pieces of spicy special barbecue. A voice of a little boy came from behind him. Soda glanced at them before he looked at Eileen and said, also, I wanted all the spicy special barbecue you have here. Soda received his order and turned around. He looked at the little boy with a smug expression. The vilest creature in the universe. You're the epitome of evil. He smirked as he heard a voice inside his head. The little boy and his mom looked at Soda with a stunned expression. Evil? You can say it like that, but I'm clearly not a good guy after all I've done just to get stronger. Soda said to Saya in his mind. Just to get stronger, Soda killed and used people for his own benefits. He even devoured their souls to get stronger. He placed his hand inside his pocket and grabbed the circular pendant. Soda glanced at the mother and child before he went back to Brian, Lynn, and cl.u.s.tear. While walking, Soda opened the pendant and stared at the picture in it. A man, a mature woman, and a little girl were smiling in the picture. The little girl in the picture has black hair that was tied in twin tails. She had pitched black eyes but the center part of it was color brown. He still had a quest that he hasn't finished. In this quest, he needed to find the little girl in the picture and gave her this pendant. He also had to tell her her father's last words. What about the father of the girl? Soda already killed him back in the desolate woods. The father was one of the people who were chasing after cl.u.s.tear. Are you really planning to find the little girl in the picture? Saya asked him. Yeah, there's nothing wrong about it. Her father gave me a quest so I will finish it. Soda nodded and said to her. Quest? Even if you will not get any benefits from it, you already know what will happen if that girl in the picture know that you're the one who killed her father. Saya said to him. Yeah, I know it. It's the truth. I will not run away from it. 
If she asked me how her father died, I will tell her that I killed him. Soda muttered in a low voice that only he and Saya could hear. There's no doubt that little girl will try to kill you if she knew it. Saya said, yeah, that's for sure. She have the right to know how her father died so I will tell her if she asked me. But it's her entire decision if she wanted revenge. Soda said and his tone slowly turned into a cold one. If she comes at me full of killing intent, then I will not hesitate to do what I need to do. You are strangely out of character today. Is there something in your mind that's bothering you? Saya asked him after she heard his words. Nothing. Soda shook his head and he placed back the pendant inside his pocket. Also, you're acting strange this week. I've been observing you for a long time so I know if you're thinking about something. Saya said to him. What do you mean? Soda asked him. This week, you've been coming to the red light district every day. I know that you only visited the red light district after you've experienced a life and death situation to venture stress. Saya explained to him what she found strange in him. She pointed at something. Look at you. Your hands are shaking. Soda looked at his hands and saw that Saya was right. His hands were trembling and sweating. You're afraid, but I don't know why you are afraid. Soda took a deep breath to calm himself. He was afraid of the upcoming events as he knew that there was no safe place in this world once chaos broke out. Use this festival to relax yourself and forget your problem. In the first place, that's the purpose of this festival. To let the students experience the life of normal students. Right, I'll do that. Soda nodded his head with a solemn look. Soda gave the bottles of water to his company. CL.U.S.Tear, Lynn, and Brian, the three of them also received the spicy special barbecue that Soda bought. He opened the cap of the bottle and drunk the water inside before he looked up at the blue sky. He then suddenly felt something coursing through his body. Hmm? Soda closed his eyes and found that his mana began circulating inside his body. It seems that he could finally use his mana once again. What's wrong, brother Soda? CL.U.S.Tear asked him with a worried expression as she saw his look. Lynn and Brian also looked at Soda and found him with his eyes closed. After a few moments, Soda opened his eyes. He looked at them with a smile on his face and said, I've just recovered. The side effect of the monster potion is gone. I can finally use my mana once again. Oh. That's a good news. We can finally spar against each other, Brian said with an excited expression. You can leave it at that. Let's spar later. Soda said to Brian. Brian, CL.U.S.Tear, and Lynn was happy for Soda. They were glad that he recovered his strength. Let's continue, Soda said to them and everyone agreed to him. The group continued to walk around the institute visiting the other class. They experienced and saw various things that other classes made. In the later part, Brian left because the theater play was going to start soon and he needed to prepare. CL.U.S.Tear grew closer to Lynn and Soda was happy for her that she made another friends. He smiled and thought that this was not bad. Enjoying time like this was not bad at all. In the harbor near the Maria country, the country in the eastern area of the Melosa country, a group of five people arrived. Three of them were women and two were men. All of them were wearing the same black hooded robe with red linings. It had a symbol of a red eye on the back of the robe. There were words written in unknown language above the red eye. One of the women stepped forward and pulled out her hood. It revealed her flawless face without a hint of any scratch. She had pure white hair and red pupils. Her black lips curved into a smile. We're finally here in the Giza continent. Disperse and accomplish the task of the sin. She said and the four people behind her vanished. If Soda was here he would instantly know that these people were the subordinates of the seven deadly sins, one of the three bringer of calamity. They were the high ranking officers of the seven deadly sins. Somewhere in the gods continent, a group of ten people was inside a dark and wide place. The atmosphere in this place was heavy and chilly. Each one of them possessed unrivaled strength. They were the ten commandments of the gods will. In front of them was a terrifying creature that existed 20,000 years ago, the Pale Armor Man that appeared in the desolate woods. Beside the Pale Armor Man, was a horse with pale color flames over its body. The armored man and the horse was tied using a very special chain. Carmilla, the commandment of truth, stepped forwards. She opened her mouth and said, We've already acquired one of the four authority. We only need three and we'll be able to make our wish a reality. This man is powerful. I wouldn't be able to capture him if I was alone. Julius, the commandment of love, said from the side, capturing this man alive was a hard task even for commandments like him. He knew that the power of the user of an authority was no joke at all. If he made one wrong move, he knew that he would suffer great consequences. Finding the other three authority is going to be a hard task. But we have to accomplish it if we want to make our wish come true. We must have patience. The commandment of patience said. The two original hosts of the authorities died in the war 20,000 years ago. Since the hosts were dead, the authorities found another compatible hosts. And we have to find those hosts. The commandment of faith said. Finding the hosts of the authorities in this universe was an extremely difficult task even for them. 
they were only lucky that this armored man was still alive when they checked his burial site. Up until now, they only managed to locate the three original hosts of the authority. Two were dead, the other one was in their possession, and the last one was unknown. We have to find the authorities even if we have to turn this world upside down. The commandment of repose said. Carmilla looked at them before she opened her mouth and said, all of us need to make a move, or else we won't be able to find the authorities. Ha ha ha, Carmilla is right. We're going to show the world how God loved them. Julius said as he laughed. They had to find it, because time was running out until the next judgment day. The era was changing and the powerful organization in the dark was starting to move. The seven deadly sins, the commandments of the God's will, and lastly, the twelve zodiacs. All of them will bring calamity and chaos in this world. The gods will once again experience the changing era. End of volume 3 tilde. A.N. Thank you guys for following my work despite the bad grammar. I thanked everyone who encouraged me and gave me some tips. I will try to improve my work in the next volume. I hope you keep following this work. Next is the volume 4 of this novel. A lot of things will happen here and the version 2 of the game will start in this volume. Some people were asking if there's a romance. Of course, mark my word you will see it in the next volume. Also, some people ask me if I'm going to dump all the characters when Soda go to God's continent. I'm only going to say that all of them will have an important role in the future events of the story. So keep reading as we're going to slowly uncover the background of these characters and their role in the future. Clang. 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 Metallic loud sounds echoed in the whole area as two figures were clashing against each other. Sparks flew everywhere every time their weapons collided. Both of the fighters were armed with metallic gauntlet and gloves. Bargain, Brian, Lumalia, and Alice were on the corner of the training ground watching both fighters clashed against each other. Clang. 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 Soda swiftly moved his body from side to side. He was one of the two fighters in the center. He stepped forward and threw a powerful punch. Swoosh. His opponent was a very agile woman. She had a flexible body and good reflexes that put Soda down several times. She was the vice president of the Soda's fan union club, Jean Livenist. Jean clenched her first and she also threw her punch towards Soda. She wasn't at Soda's body, she was just using her punch to block all of Soda's attack. Using her attack as a defense and it was very effective. Both of their fists collided and it caused a powerful gust of wind. Soda knitted his eyebrows as he was pushed back. He felt that both of his arms were going to snap if he continued doing this. A huge shadow covered Jean's body. Jean looked up and saw Yuko above her. She quickly moved her body to the side and Yuko slammed the ground with her huge body. Bang! Jean pulled back both of her fists as she appeared in front of Yuko. She launched powerful punches causing Yuko to flew and crashed on the ground leaving a trail of smoke from behind. Looking at this, Soda raised both of his hands in the air and said, I've lost. Your strength is more than I could handle. Jean was a paraponera, a demi famous for their powerful raw strength. He was no way to match her brute strength with his current stats. Although he knew that he wasn't Jean's match, he still couldn't believe that she was stronger than he imagined. She could overwhelm him just by using her raw strength. He and Yuko wouldn't stand a chance against Jean. No, it's my pleasure to accompany you in your training, Jean said. She then smiled and praised him. Still, I think that your strength is very impressive. I wouldn't be that long before you catch up to me. That's right, your strength is enough to defeat most of the second year students in this institute. I personally think that you would be able to rank in the top 20 of the second year. Bargain stepped forward and said. It wasn't that long since Soda enrolled in the institute. He personally saw the tremendous improvement of Soda's strength with his own eyes. I see. Soda nodded his head and he looked at his palm. Without using the Vajra Sword Saya, it was hard to match the higher students of the Ladro Institute. Since you've used your points to hire to personally instruct you, I will teach you some skills to improve your taming ability, Bargain said to him. Soda lifted up his head and looked at Bargain when he heard Bargain's words. Taming ability? Soda asked. Yes, I'll impart you some of my skills. Bargain nodded at him. Damn. I want to have a pet too. Brian said with a hint of jealousy. He didn't have a pet so this skill was useless to him. Soda asked the institute to let Yuko enter the school ground and the institute agreed to it. Well, they wouldn't decline Soda's request because they knew that Soda's pet, the red fur bear, was part of his strength. It would be a waste if he didn't train his taming ability. Ever since the special test, Soda's strength showed huge improvement. His growth is terrifying. Alice commented from the side. She saw a lot of geniuses in her homeland but she never once saw someone who was like Soda. Lumalia glanced at Alice and she placed her hand in front of her chest. She felt her heart beating wildly. She knew that if she didn't train for herself. These people around her were going to left her. I need to do my best. I'll catch up to them. Lumalia said to herself as she gave herself a bit of courage to chase after her friends. Jean looked at Bargain and Soda before she said, I'm going to rest for now. 
Bargan nodded at her while Soda thanked her for accompanying him in his training. Jean bowed her head before she walked to the side and picked up a bottle of water. She opened the cap and drunk that water inside the bottle. She looked at Soda with an admiring gaze. She was sure that Soda was going to be a powerhouse in the future. She wasn't wrong at all, Soda was a man of focus who only looked at the goal in front of him. She admired those traits of him. He even fought Gregory, a noble head, just to save his classmates. Next year, I'm sure of it that he would be able to dominate the whole institute, Jean muttered with an excited expression on her face. She was sure of it as she knew the power of the top ranker of the third-year students. She was Jean Livenist, the top 23 ranker of the third-year students. The daughter of the tribe leader of the Paraponera race in the Hebrae kingdom. She looked at Soda's friends and asked, I'm in a good mood today, do you want me to train you? Sure, Brian agreed to her without hesitation. Lumalia and Alice looked at each other before they nodded. Two weeks had passed since the cultural festival of the Ladro Institute. Soda managed to dominate the first-year ranker in these two weeks. He was now officially the top one ranker of the first-year students of the Ladro Institute. He earned a lot of points from becoming the top one ranker. He used his points to bargain and he used his remaining points to buy some skills suitable for his fighting style. Actually, he could manually learn the skill in his skill tree if he had the spell book of it. The only problem was that even if he learned this skill he wouldn't be able to lit up the skill in his skill tree. He still needed to use his skill points to lit it up and upgrade it so that he could promote his class rank. Soda woke up early in the morning. It's weekend so he didn't have any classes. I'll visit Jimmy to check if everything is ready, Soda muttered as he pushed himself out of the bed. He went to the bathroom to brush his teeth and wash his face. After that, he went downstairs and prepared himself a cup of coffee. The outdoor training is going to start next week. Next week, the whole first year will train around the vicinity of the Hebrae Kingdom. They will experience various things and encounter a lot of things in this training. They would also learn a lot of things. The Institute hoped that the first year students could handle themselves in this training. Outdoor training. The adventurers are like that. The Institute wanted the students to have a real battle experience, not just a mock battle. They wanted to know how the students would fare against this. Soda said in a low voice before he took a sip of his coffee. A lot of students will experience hardship in this outdoor training. People who didn't experience life and death battle will have a hard time adjusting. They aren't used to living in the wild so you know what will happen in this outdoor training. Saya's voice sounded in his mind. Yeah, I don't think that our class will have a problem with it, Soda said and he stood up. He went to Yuko's house and prepared her breakfast. Yeah, a goblin like you originally lived in the wild so you wouldn't have a problem with it. Also, after what you experience in the desolate woods in Gripeen City it's hard to think that you will experience hardship in this outdoor training. Okay, let's go to Lanny Corporation, Soda said before he bid farewell to Yuko. Soda arrived in the Lanny Corporation and he asked the receptionist about Jimmy. Please wait for a moment, sir. The receptionist said to him in a polite tone. Okay. Soda nodded at her and he just stood on his position waiting for Jimmy. It's been two weeks and he haven't heard anything from Jimmy. It seems that finding the monster potion was hard. After a while, the receptionist told him to follow her. Soda followed her and she brought him in front of Jimmy's office. Sir, I brought him here. The receptionist said in a polite tone through the door. Good job, you can come in Soda. Jimmy's voice sounded behind the door. Soda looked at the receptionist and thanked her before he went inside Jimmy's office. Soda went inside the room and saw Jimmy comfortably sitting on his seat. Soda sat opposite of Jimmy. I going to visit you tomorrow but I didn't think that you would come here on your own accord. It seems that you really need the monster potion now. Jimmy said to him with a smile on his face. He opened the drawer on his desk and placed the bottles with orange liquid inside it. Three bottles of monster potion. It seems that you've used your power just to get a hold of these three bottles of monster potions. Soda said as he picked up one bottle and looked at it. After verifying that it was really a monster potion, Soda placed it back on the desk. Here, I've done to so you can enter inside the Lanny Corp and go to my office without bothering yourself. Just show this to receptionist. Jimmy said and he placed an ID on top of his desk. You've bothered yourself, Soda said as he took the ID and looked at it. This ID showed that he was a member of the Lanny Corp and he was the captain of the Explorer group at that. Captain? It means that he was the leader of the people who went to an expedition for the Lanny group. He also have an access to some ruins and dungeons that Lanny Corp owned. You can pick your own subordinate that you will lead among my subordinates. You can call me if you want to go to an expedition or not. Well, I will not force you as you just have to bring the name in any of your expedition. Jimmy said as he leaned back on his chair. This is pretty good. Soda nodded and he looked at Jimmy in the eyes. Give me the details of the ruins and dungeons that Lanny Corp owned. I will decide to clear some of the dungeons if something got my interest in your possession. Okay, I'll prepare it for you. I will deliver it in your house. Jimmy agreed to him. He's favoring Soda too much even though Soda's power level wasn't on the top. He saw something different on Soda. Different from the other people. 
a lot of people still didn't realize Soda's tremendous potential that placed him above other people. He's betting on that potential that he saw in Soda. While those people didn't realize his potential, Jimmy was going to find Soda so that when Soda grew into a powerhouse he will get a lot of benefits from it. Surely, based on Soda's attitude he wouldn't forget Jimmy. Okay, thanks for this, Soda said as he knew what Jimmy was thinking. He wasn't against it as he knew that he would also receive a lot of benefits from partnering with Jimmy. It's nothing, I'm doing this for my future, Jimmy said with a smile. Future? I don't think that you will continue to invest in my once you know that I'm a monster. I'll squeeze out all the benefits I could take from you before I leave this continent. Soda said inwardly while looking at Jimmy. Ufufu, you are really a scheming bastard. Pretending to be a demi and lying to everyone that you know. Saya chuckled. She then added, I have to say that you should distance yourself from your friends. It's for your own good. Once they've realized that you're a monster, I wonder how many of your so-called friends will stay beside you. I don't need them to stay by my side. I also don't need their protection. I will handle it on my own with my own powers, that's all. Soda said to Saya in his mind. He took a deep breath and pulled out something from his pocket. He placed a thin yellow piece of paper on top of Jimmy's desk. A talisman? Jimmy said when he saw the piece of yellow paper. Yeah, a transmission talisman to be precise. I wanted your help to get me a pair of this so that this piece of paper will become useful to me. Soda said. Okay, that's easy but where did you find this talisman? Jimmy nodded and asked him. I got this talisman from one of Gregory's subordinates. It lost its connection to its other pair. It only means one thing, the other pair of this talisman was destroyed. Soda explained to Jimmy. I see. Jimmy looked at Soda with a serious expression and asked, I just wanted to ask one thing from you. Do you have any idea who killed Gregory? I can't think of anyone right now. I also doubt that it's the Ladro Institute. Soda said as he rubbed his chin. Yeah, I also think too. Ladro Institute wouldn't kill anyone that easily with investigating what happened there. You should probably be wary of your surrounding. A lot of nobles still think that you're the one who killed Gregory. Jimmy warned him to be careful of his surrounding. He knew that those nobles were still pushing the blame on Soda despite the evidence in front of them that Soda really didn't kill Gregory. Nobles? It will be hard to make a move with a lot of eyes watching me. Soda muttered as he rubbed his chin. He then looked at Gregory and asked, What about you? Do you think that I'm the one who killed Gregory? No. Jimmy simply said to him, You didn't even hesitate, why is that? Soda asked with a curious expression. Based on my understanding of you, I think you understand the consequences you will experience if you killed the head of a noble family in public. You're a smart man, I know you wouldn't do it. At the very least, you will only kill Gregory if no one is watching. Jimmy said as he smiled while looking at Soda in the eyes. You're right at all. I wouldn't kill Gregory inside a city while everyone was watching. After all, I don't want to make an enemy of those nobles. Soda nodded and said to Jimmy. He wouldn't do such a dumb thing while his power level was too low. Soda would only do it if he has enough to confront those hungry nobles. Those nobles would gather together if someone threatened them. Is there anything that you want? Jimmy asked him one last time. Nothing. I'll contact you if I have something on my mind that needs your help. Soda shook his head and said. Well, if you say so. Jimmy looked at Soda before he closed his eyes and crossed his arms in front of his chest. I'll go now, Soda said before he stood up. He picked up the three bottles of monster potion on the table. I will contact you again, Jimmy said. I'm looking forward to it, Soda said before he left Jimmy's office. One day later. Okay, I have someone I need to introduce to you, Soda said as he looked at Brian and Brando. Ever since Brando become an adventurer, he's always doing a quest with Brian and sometimes with Soda. Right now, Brando was an rank adventurer. Who is it? Brian asked him with his face full of question marks. Both of you know her. From now on, she will join us in some of our quests, Soda said to Brian and Brando. Brian tilted as he didn't have any idea about the new member of their party. Brando just simply wait for the new member to come. After a few minutes, the new member of their party arrived. Class rep? Brian exclaimed when he saw the person who arrived. Yeah, she's going to join us. Class rep didn't have any source of income after her father cut all ties with her so she decided to become an adventurer like us. Soda explained to them. I see. So that's why. Brian nodded as if he understood it. Our party consisted of 1 C rank, 1 D rank, 1 E rank, and 1 F rank. I'm the highest rank and class rep is the lowest. Still, we could take some difficulty quest with the level of our party. I think that the adventurers guild will let us. Soda said to them. Oh? It's for another quest. Brian said with an excited expression. I'm going to ask the two of you if you're fine with class rep joining our party? Soda looked at them and asked. Yeah, I'm actually excited that class rep will join us in our adventure, Brian said. I don't have any problem with it, Brando said to him. Thank you guys for accepting me. I'll do my best to help all of you. 
Lumalia stepped forward and said to the two. Good. Soda nodded in satisfaction when he saw this. Their party was pretty good. Two tanks, two damage dealer, and one long range attacker. The tanks were Yuko and Brando. The two damage dealer were Soda and Brian, while Lumalia was the long range attacker with her spells. Me and Brian will boost the two of you so you can easily reach Drank, Soda said to Brando and Lumalia. Boost? Brian tilted his head as he couldn't understand what Soda meant. Soda looked at Brian and he explained it in simple words that even Brian could understand, it means that we will help them in their quest. With their power level, it's not a problem for the Adventurer's Guild to promote them to D rank as long as they finish the prerequisite number of quests. Okay, I understand it. Lumalia nodded as she understood what he meant. She looked at her party and was quite surprised when she saw Brando with them. She didn't expect that Brando was already joining Brian and Soda in their adventurers. She wondered when they get so close to the point that they formed a party. Yeah, Soda always dominated Brando's class in tests and special test. If it was those spoiled brats, they would harbor hate towards Soda who always beat their class alone. There's still one week before the outdoor training so Soda was planning to finish some quest in Adventurer's Guild. He would try to earn some skill points and later level up one of his spells. Just a little bit skill points and he would be able to upgrade one of his spells to level 10. If that happens, Soto would be able to rank up his class to rank 3 mage. I should prepare for my evolution next. Soda thought as he rubbed his chin. He snapped out of his thoughts when he felt that Brian, Brando, and Lumalia were staring at him. What's wrong? Soda opened his mouth and asked them. You're the leader of our party so I'm going to ask what should we do right now, Brian asked him with stars in his eyes. He wanted to go on an adventurer right now with his friends. Brandon and Lumalia nodded at Brian's words. Soda sighed as he knew what's in Brian's mind. Well, it's not a problem for him as Soda was already planning to finish some quest today. Okay, let's go to the Adventurer's Guild and picked up some quests there, Soda said. Yosh, Brian exclaimed with an excited face. He can't wait to finish some quest. Soda and his co. went towards the Adventurer's Guild and they arrived there after walking for a few minutes. Adventurer's Guild was still the same. A lot of people came in and out of the guild's door, people were laughing and chatting inside, and some were on the corner waiting for their party to show up. Since Soda was somewhat famous in the circle of adventurers, a lot of people greeted him when they saw him enter the guild. Almost every adventurer that stayed here in Ladro City knew Soda. Oh, Soda, you're here again, how about we drink sometimes? We should take a quest together sometimes. I wanted to see your partner in action. By partner, they meant Yuko. He's the only tamer here in Adventurer's Guild so everyone wanted to take a quest together with Soda. Ha ha, next time, I still have to teach my party the essence of adventurers. Soda smiled and said to them with a wry smile. Party? You've added one person to your party. You said before that Yuko is enough for you and you didn't need a party. So why change your mind? I sometimes thought that you Soda, only enroll in the Ladros Institute to take some of the students there to create your own party. Ha ha, a lot of things happened, Soda said to them. Soda. Do you still have a plan increase your party member? Me and my brother decided to join a suitable party for the two of us. I don't have any plan right now, my hands are full taking care of these three. I'll notify you when I decide to expand my party. Soda replied. Okay, you hear that brother? Yeah, yeah, I hear that brother. Brian, Brando, and Lumalia just listened to him talk to every adventurer. They simply followed him from behind while some of the adventurers were looking at them. I never thought that Soda who only talked to Brian and Alice in class could talk to every adventurers here at the same time. Lumalia thought as she looked at Soda's back. Soda arrived in front of the quest board. We're here, let's take a look at all the quests here. Brandon, Brian, and Lumalia stood beside Soda. They looked at every quest that was on the board. Soda, let's do this quest, Brian said as he pointed his finger at one of the quests on the board. Let me take a look. Soda read the description on the quest and he felt that he lost some of his energy today. The quest that Brian wanted to do was a monster subjugation quest, and the monster that they needed to subjugate was the lava slime that appeared in the mountain near Ladro City. It seems that the lava slime picked Brian's interest. After all, Soda and Nio forced the knowledge about powerful slime inside Brian's head before. You, you just wanted to tame it and make it your own pet, Soda said as he looked at Brian with a tired expression. What's wrong with that? Brian complained to him. Everything is wrong. I really couldn't argue with you. Soda massaged his temples and said, my decision is we're not taking that quest. Why? Brian pushed his face closer to Soda. He looks like he was about to cry. Do you know how strong is a lava slime, huh? The core of the lava slime is a monster orb so you should understand how strong it is. Soda explained to Brian. Isn't that great? The stronger the slime the better it is for becoming my pet. Brian said. 
No matter what you say I'm not changing my decision. In the first place, I'm only a C-rank adventurer so the Adventurer's Guild wouldn't permit us in taking that quest. A monster of the level is for B-rank adventurers. So to explain to Brian. Brian slumped down his shoulders in disappointment. He understood that he was only a D-rank adventurer, not B-rank. Brando patted Brian's shoulder and said, It's okay, wait till you reach B-rank and I'm sure that Soda will permit you. Brando, you're really my friend. As my thanks, I will fight you later, Brian said as he hugged Brando. Soda ignored them and he focused his attention in finding a suitable quest for them. If it was in the game, Soda would prefer to go alone. This time was different, he could die any time. Soda wouldn't want to die so he will bring anyone that could help him in his quest. Brian, Brando, and Lumalia possess decent powers. They could help him in his quest with their strength. Hmm? Something caught Soda's attention. He reached out his hand and picked a quest. He read the quest description and found that this quest was strange. The description was not detailed enough for him to understand the danger of the quest. There's also no rank requirements in this quest. It seems that the quest giver was desperate for it. Soda looked back at the adventurers in the guild and asked, Do you know about this quest? The adventurers looked at the quest in his hands before they replied to him. Yeah, the quest giver is pretty desperate. With little rewards, they are asking us to investigate their lord so we naturally left this quest there. No one will bother themselves with a quest with such low rewards even though the difficulty is high. That's right, the quest was about the lord of a certain land near the Hebra kingdom. The quest giver was asking to investigate the lord of their land as he was the most suspicious suspect from the recent killings in their land. Soda closed his eyes and he rubbed his chin. After a few moments, he opened his eyes and said, Okay, I'll take this quest. You okay, Soda? The reward is too low for that quest. I think you should pick another quest. It's enough for me. Soda shook his head and said. He then walked towards the receptionist and placed the quest in front of her. I'd like to take this quest, Soda said to her with a serious expression. Lumalia and Brando looked at each other and sighed. They have no choice but to follow Soda. Oh, we're going to visit a lord. I hope that lord is strong enough to entertain me. Brian smirked and said with a somewhat arrogant expression. Hey, we're going to investigate the lord, not fight the lord. Soda glanced at Brian and said. Sir, the one who posted this quest has one condition. The receptionist said to Soda. And what it is? Soda raised his eyebrows. He wanted to meet the one who accepted his quest. The receptionist answered his question in a polite tone. Meet the one who accepted his quest? Soto was a little bit surprised when he heard it. This also confirmed one thing, and that this quest was really special. Soto agreed to the condition of the quest without hesitation. He wasn't after the money of the quest. He was after the skill points and exp rewards of the quest that he will receive from the system. Material rewards weren't that important to him. He still had a lot of money and he had a high-grade sword and artifacts. The Dark Grade, Vajra Sword Saya, and the Incomplete Universal Artifact, the Soul Blood Earring, were enough for his current level. Yeah, it's enough to dominate those people who were at the same level as him but those people who were higher level than him. It's still not enough. That's why he needed to train his fighting abilities and skills. He also needed to learn more combat arts to maximize the benefits that he will receive in his evolution. I understand, Sir Soda. I'll immediately notify the person in charge to let the quest giver know that you accepted the quest. The receptionist said to him in a polite tone. Okay, we'll wait here. Soda nodded at her before he turned around and looked at his party. Let's wait here for a while. Brando, Lumalia, and Brian nodded their head at him. But Brando has some doubts about his decision. Are you sure we should take this quest? Brando asked Soda with slight hesitation. Yeah, it's a good opportunity for us to show our skills, Soda said and he sat down on a vacant chair. If this quest was really as good as he imagined then they would not be able to avoid a battle. Fighting? I thought that we only need to investigate the lord of the land, Lumalia asked him. Do you really think that we could avoid fighting? Soda asked as he looked at Brian, Lumalia, and Brando. Um. Lumalia didn't know what to say after he asked that question. No, that's what I wanted, Brian answered him with an eager look. This battle maniac seems like he really wanted to fight the said lord. Soda sighed and he looked at Lumalia and Brando with a serious expression. We are adventurers, we can't avoid fighting all the time. There are bandits and monsters everywhere in this land, so do you really think that we can avoid them? No. That's why we should fight them and teach them a lesson, Brian answered him once again. Brian is right. The wilderness is not as peaceful as inside the city. There's no law in the wilderness so anyone can do what they wanted. Soda's tone suddenly changed as it turned chilly. Be prepared to fight all the time or else it would cost your life. Remember this. This world isn't as nice as you thought. Lumalia opened her eyes wildly when she heard those cold words coming out of Soda's mouth. She suddenly recalled what happened in the desolate woods two months ago. Back then, Soda was like a cold-blooded murderer when he mercilessly killed those bandits. 
She lowered her head and looked down at her feet. She wondered what happened to Soda in the past that built up this mindset. Soda was thrown into this world without his memories. He didn't have anything in him except the memories of when he was playing the Battle Worlds online. He had nothing at that time, really nothing. Everything was blank. Everything began in that cold and dark place. He subconsciously treated this world like a game even though deep inside him, he knew that this world was different from the world that he knew. And he could die any time if he didn't strengthen his will. No one could save him but himself. That's why Soda killed everyone in that dungeon and even ate the bodies of the goblins like him just to survive. He did everything he could to survive in that brutal place full of undead and monster. That's also the reason why Soda was extremely fond of Yuko. She was the first creature that Soda treated as his family as he knew that he had no real family in this world. His family was gone and he couldn't even remember their face. At that time, he was happy when he found someone that he could share his burden. He was not alone anymore as Yuko was there for him. He always talked to her even though he knew that Yuko could barely understand his words. But that's enough for him to keep himself from getting insane. Soda experienced something that these people who grow up in a city wouldn't understand. I hope I could help you like what you did for me. Lumalia thought as she gently bit her lower lips. Sir Soda. He's here. The receptionist notified him that the quest giver had arrived. Soda stood up and said, Okay, guide me to where he is. He knew that this place wasn't a good place to talk about confidential things. He took a lot of confidential quests in the game, so he knew that right procedure about it. Please, follow me, sir. The receptionist nodded before she turned around. Soda turned his head and looked at his party. Let's go. We'll know more about this quest after we talk to the quest giver. Lumalia, Brando, and Brian nodded before they stood up. The receptionist guided him in one of the rooms inside the guild. We're here, sir. The receptionist bowed her head before she left. Soda thanked her before he opened the door and went inside with his party. Inside the room, he saw an old man with short white hair and white mustache sitting in a chair. He was wearing a normal black shirt and black pants. Nothing outstanding and worth mentioning in his appearance. He was just an ordinary old man. Good morning. The old man stood up and greeted them in a polite tone. Soda smiled in return before he sat down opposite of the old man. Lumalia and Ko also sat beside Soda after they exchanged greetings with the old man. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. The old man said with a smile before he introduced himself. I'm Jared, a resident of the first dukedom. I'm Soda Ayashi and this is my party. Soda introduced himself and his party members to the old man in front of him. Then, his expression turned serious. He looked at the old man straight in the eyes and asked, So can you tell me more about the quest? I wanted to know everything that you knew. Jared gulped as he felt something pressing down on his shoulders while looking at Soda. This young man isn't an ordinary person. He thought and he was glad that this person was the one who accepted his quest. Okay, I'll tell you about it. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Jared said before he took a deep breath and began to explain everything he knew to Soda. The first dukedom was 30 kilometers away from the Ladro city. Jared traveled from his hometown to a huge country just like Ibre Kingdom. He did it because he wanted to stop the madness that was happening in his hometown. And the most suspicious person was the current lord, Duke Ranson. He didn't want to place a quest in the Adventurer's Guild in his hometown because the lord could easily know that he was the one who gave that quest. If that happens, he knew that he would also die. No one could go against their lord in his hometown. So the lord easily shut down all the quest about the recent killings in their dukedom saying that he will be the one to investigate it. But after two months the killings in the land didn't stop. In fact, it grew worse. The guild master of the adventurer's guild in the first dukedom couldn't take it anymore. He personally issued a quest to investigate it but what transpired on that day was something that everyone couldn't imagine. The 30 adventurers that took the quest died on that night. Every citizen of the first dukedom experienced fear and anxiety. At the same time, they began to suspect their lord but they don't have any evidence in their suspicion. So they couldn't do anything about it. An idea came inside Jared's head at that time. That was to travel to the nearest large countries and issued a quest about it. He didn't tell anyone about his plan because if the Lord knew his plan he would die too just like what happened to his son. Okay, I've heard it all, Soda said as he rubbed his chin. He pondered the things that he should do after hearing the story from the old man's mouth. He shook his head and decided to think about it once they arrived in the first dukedom. He had to hear the story about the other people there to verify the words of the old man. Old man, we're going back right now to your hometown so I need to sign the quest to it, Soda said as he ended the conversation. He then stood up and turned around. 